Welcome to the uh, Market Geometry Mentoring Session. It's for free Monday, September 28th. Thank you to the CME Group. And, um, my gosh, it's almost October. Can you believe that? It's going to be snowing before you know it, I'll tell you. Anyway, let's take a look at some markets and see if we can find... See if we can find some interesting trades. How about that? Uh, one of the things... Okay, when any of the median lines are broken, somebody says, do they become support and resistance areas we see in your chart? Yes. We call those switchbacks. Yep, exactly. So if they're broken you, you, and... Uh, you can expect that they'll come back and often be, if they were resistance, then they become support. That's exactly right. Just like trend lines or multi-pivot lines. Hey, Mark, how are you? So, one of the requests, was one last administrative thing. Um, one person has requested twice that I reduce the size, find a way to re reduce the size of the video file. I don't really have anybody other than one person having problems appearing play, apparently playing these flash files. I don't know that I can rever uh, reduce them much smaller in size without also eating into the quality of the audio and the video, which I'm really not willing to do. Yeah, I think they load pretty good and they look pretty good, don't they? Well, I, I actually don't think they do. I think they need to update their flash I just want to make sure nobody else has have any problems before I answer their email. But thanks, David. Hey, Reese, how are you? Okay. Uh, okay. So the other thing is one of the really popular things last week that we talked about. Uh, well, today, for example, will be recorded, and it'll be up probably in about an hour and a half. Um, and those, you can go back and see every the all the Monday ones free forever. Um, the ones during the week, Tuesday through Friday, are, are for members only. Um, but it's more of what kind of what we do today, a little bit more involved, but very similar. Uh, Paul says, I visualize median lines like a raised ridge in a shallow pond. Water laps up against the ridge and either reverses away from it or breaches it, and it will accelerate away from it on the other side as it streams down the far side of the ridge. I kind of like that, Paul. You cannot see what people are typing. Unfortunately, it's a uh, I can't control that. That's a that's controlled by uh, go to uh, webinar. So, sorry, Paul the poet, yeah. So okay, oh, one of the then one of the off requested things that we talked about last week that we are going to do a is we're going to do bar by bar on some charts every day, and second of all, um, now I did not do one today because I wanted to ask you a question. We'll do one tomorrow. I've got it already picked out. Uh, I'm going to post a chart a day in advance, and then the next day we'll do it bar by bar. Now let me clarify because I want to make sure that you, this is what you guys want. I'm going to post, what I was thinking about doing is posting a chart that has structure on it about halfway through the chart, but has important structure that you'll need for the right-hand side. That makes sense? So the move, important pieces for the move will be set up. However, it, it'll, it'll be exactly like homework. However, it won't have... You won't know what the chart is, and you won't know what the scale is, because it either would get, probably give it away. There's no, that's fine, Paul. What do you guys think? Is that is that what you guys are thinking? And the reason why I don't want to give I don't want to give away what the commodity or currency or or its or futures is. And and I would hope you actually just don't spend just don't spend any time trying to figure out what time frame it is or anything else, just look at the chart, which is how you should trade as well. Yes, yeah, so I'll give you the, I'll give you enough of the chart that it sets up the major structure, which you need to mark up. 
use crayons. Magnus, you're supposed to use crayons. Oh, oh, okay. You know what? Then go to... Okay, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, go Google this chart overlay made by Omnium Software. And I'm sure he's got a 30-day free trial. And if you use it 30 days, I think it's... Oh, there you go. Yep. Have you, have you ever used it, Magnus? Well, you can mark it up. <laughs> you can draw on a image on your screen. So you open up an image and you open chart overlay. And then you can put pitchforks and horizontal lines and sliding parallels and all kinds of stuff. You can draw it up just like you're drawing in your charting package. So on any on a, on a JPEG or a GIF or whatever. So you can just mark that rascal up. So take a 30-day trial, and that's what I would suggest. Otherwise, see, I'll be giving you, you know, you'll have done, I, otherwise I know you guys, some of you guys will spend the whole day, and then when I do the bar by bar, see, it won't be as revealing. What I want to do is give you some major structure, but have you actually be good boys and girls, and don't go trying to figure out what I'm giving you. That's right, Joe. Import it into PowerPoint, and then use simple drawing tools in PowerPoint. There's a, that's good. There you go. And so then the idea is don't spend any time trying to figure out what it is or what the time frame is. Instead, spend your time looking at the structure that's on there and get set up for the next day and go, okay, here's the, here's the mountain, here's the peak. Okay, I want this meeting line. This is an important multi-pivot line or whatever. And then the next day... We'll do bar by bar, starting from where you got it. How's that? Would I ask Michael Dell if he would give discounts to market geometry members who have accidentally damaged their laptop screens with crayon drugs? <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, I, I'll ask him, or I'll ask him if he has some special crayon remover. How's that? So far, I've gotten a no, but let me just tell you. Paul says, that is the best way to do this is not knowing the vehicle removes our biggest obstacle ourselves. That's right. We always have a bias once we know the vehicle. Yeah, so I want to actually, I don't want you guys to know. And if, you know, don't spend your time going, oh, my God, is this feeder cattle? Is this whatever? Because you're also going to have to figure out the time frame. Just, you know, do do a quick 15 minutes or so and work mark on the structure. Maybe t not even take you that long. And then when we go do bar by bar, you'll be ready to ra rock, so to speak. Uh, I, I got a no so far, but some of you may remember that I did a uh, a uh, live deposition for two weeks for uh, T Boone, and I've asked him actually if we could do a 15-minute live question and answer, either here or on Talk for Traders. And uh, so far, <laughs> no, don't say awesome because so far I gotta know. So far I, uh, I got. How about dinner? <laughs> He's uh, so far I'm not getting. I'm not, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Michael Dell the same thing. I'm gonna get have better luck with Michael Dell who's got more free time. But uh, I'll continue to work on T Boone because he he's got some great. Uh, he's made some great trades. And he's got some trade great trading stories. I'm also gonna work on. Uh, uh, well. You know, he's not very public. I'm also going to work on uh, my buddy at the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange and see if I can get him. I don't know that I'll be able to get him on here. This is too early for him in the morning these days. But however, I'm pretty sure I can get him to do an interview, uh, much like Paul and Andy and I are going to do uh, in the next week or so. We're going to we're going to redo the uh, metals market manipulation, by the way, in uh, in much better detail and much better audio and video. And then uh, and clean it up, and uh, make it as a special video. So, and uh, but my friend who I keep mentioning is really the best trader I know. I'm going to try and talk him into doing an interview with me uh, uh, 
but the good old days. Whatever trading tips he can give you. So anyway, let's look at some markets. Uh, these are the bonds that we just marked to death, and you can see they continue to rise higher. They had no trouble at all at the uh, top of the uh, canyon. And let's draw, before I just move on, because there's really nothing to do up here. Let me pull. I will squeeze in just one second see if there's anything to the left. But let's draw this in and take out the 25 and the 75 for a second. Okay, and you can see we've basically just clumped. Usually there's a nice test and retest right here on this median line. V bottom off of the energy point. That's good. We come up. And we are now becoming more efficient to the upside against this upsloping blue median line. Now let's squeeze in. Okay, so we've got two things. We've got the upper median line parallel at uh, 121.13. Yeah, and I need to change things. Yeah. I don't want Jim at NQs giving me any more grief because I'm the one that kept complaining about half ticks and let me you know, data scale well I'll do it afterwards I need to change my data scale so I don't get I'm not getting half ticks anymore on my bonds and thank you by the way for reminding me Jim okay so um, we've got uh, this high here at uh, 13 then of course we've got the upper median line parallel up there as well Actually, we got multiple. We have multiple tops. Excuse me. I have I have a, a T thing going on my mouth. One twenty one eleven. We've got another one as well. So we'll make that a zone. We got a few tops up there. So that I my guess is that that's kind of where we're headed. Are we there already? That was quick. Oh, you know, I must have had the, sorry, I'll leave it on anyway because I'm going to do bye-bye bear. So basically, we've tested, we're testing, we're filling these canyons. We're filling all the canyons right now. And now what do you think? How important are the 25 and 75 lines? Are they just as important as the other three, especially when they are confirming confluence? Um, I let's see. A a year and a half ago, I would have said they're not that important. Um, however, I have quite a few people in mentoring that use them extensively, and after basically uh, cavalierly saying a number of times to them, you know, they're not as important. They have. Uh, I have watched them successfully use them, and so uh, I, I they're not a main tool for me. I just draw sliding parallels all the time, so I, I don't use them that much. But that being said, I know some people that use them all the time. Are they as important as the median line and lower median line parallel? I haven't done the statistics to tell you the answer. They aren't to me, but they are to some people. Um, they certainly carry the frequency, but then so does a sliding parallel once a pivot is formed. So, uh, I, I I do know that sine waves, for example, and if you will, median lines are very much a um, line-based sine wave. They're built on the principle of sine waves, which is that price oscillates along a important frequency. Sine waves often break into quartets or octaves, if you will. So, that would lead you to believe mathematically that they would have similar importance. How about that? If the as above them below model stands true, then they are almost a center line between the center line and lower median line. That's right, Paul. Yeah. All right, so now here we are. We find ourselves retesting these double tops. in a little bit.
it there for you. What do we think from here, up or down? Down, then up. Could go either way, down, down. Restoring energy is next. Up, then a reverse. Okay. Don't know? Yeah, I'm with, I'm kind of in the don't know myself. Need structure? Okay. Ron says maybe up to this resistance and then reverse. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I kind of need some, to me it's still stair-stepping higher. And uh, while I, I'd really love to go, wow, this is a great place for a corner trade. Somewhere in here might be, and I'll mark that uh, with, a, with a question. This may be an interesting area for a corner trade to develop. However, there ain't nothing here yet. So, I'm going to let it, uh, let it do it, let it do it, let it do a thing. Let it do its thing. I know I've been speaking English, so I just load on. And then uh, when it actually starts to trade and make structure, then we'll know what to do. Let's see, what haven't we looked at? Um, oh, I know. Somebody else said that they only use, there's, I know there's a lot of people that use MetaTrader here. And we've been soliciting MetaTrader, MetaTrader ticks, oh boy, MetaTrader, Mary, slap me, MetaTrader tips. As well as Trade Station, A Signal, Ninja, etc. So, uh, I'm sorry, I was reading a comment. Uh, trying to understand anyway um, let me pick I know that they don't do 20 minutes they do 15 and 30 minutes so let me do this let's look at Euro FX um, and a lot of people are on freebies so let's look at let's look at Euro FX which is a freebie for a lot of people by a lot of brokers and let's look at uh, 30 let's get a 30 minute chart Okay. Now, remember, this is an e-signal consolidated feed. So, if you're using, for example, uh, one of the one of those brokers, Gain, uh, FXCM, IB, your data may look slightly different than this because this is about 15 different sources slammed into one, so to speak. However, you should be able to chart a 30-minute cash euro against the dollar. This is what it would look like. So let's let's play uh, let's play our fa favorite game this morning. How's that? Dum -da -da -dum -da -da -dum. Eh, that that looks like looks like a good amount. Oh, that looks like a good amount of structure, doesn't it? Let's go to so we'll space that rascal out. There we go. And let's play gain warning. Objects in the mirror may be at a different price to what you see. <laughs> you know, I we could we'll put that on a bumper sticker, but we'll probably get sued. But <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you can say gain. Does the word bucket shop mean anything to you? I'm telling you, the SEC and the uh, NFA and CFTC are going to clean these guys, all these guys up in the next two years. You watch. And there'll be a cons I, I predict. I predict. <laughs> that, that is why they call it, Paul. Uh, Paul, Paul says... 
bucket. It's what you'll have left to pee in once they're done with you. Let me just explain it to you. I don't know if your mom and dad ever used this. And Mary, again, these are technical terms. Didn't have a pot to pee in. Did your parents ever say that? That's because they went to the bucket shop. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. All right, here we go. So let's go bar by bar, all right? So let's take a look. This was a huge move lower here. Wide range bars. Look at this bar over here. You can see it spiked lower, but it closed all the way back up here in the middle of its range. So I'm actually going to just control, use this as the bottom of the mountain, this baseline. Even though something like that. In fact, I might even just do this. And it looks like I'm leaving some stuff on the table, so to speak. Okay, but... I don't see, look at down here, there's no closes, even remotely close. And we now, we now know what this is called, for those of you that come during the week. And we'll be teaching these in the advanced session, and, and now during the week we're going to be talking about them. And it's in lesson three. Anybody watching lesson three yet? No, I don't want to refresh, we're going bar by far, and I'm purposely hiding things to the right. See, I don't want you to know what's on the right. We're going to go bar by bar. Slow down, guys. I, I know you can't see the current data. That's what, we're doing that on purpose. Is the... Jeff Gold, what do you mean? Is the chat here? Lesson three is interesting. <laughs> multiple MPL means multiple pivot lines, so multiple touches. In this case, they're all lows, but a lot of times you draw them as center lines. For example, let's say I drew one. Uh, here's an interesting one. In fact, let's draw one. Here, here's another interesting one. Multiple pivot lines. Anybody see that? This is a good candidate for a center line or a multiple pivot line. Lows. Well, these are, once again, these are all lows. Darn it. Well, I got one high, one high in here. If I scooch it down just a little. There you go. Right there. Just like that. So I've got some highs and lows. Now I've got a multi... This also is a multiple pivot line. Yes? Yes, Joe, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jeff, you call, this is where you type in your questions. That's correct. Yep, and then I'll read them. Yeah, there you go. Every touch off the multiple pivot line has major separation to the upside. Right, exactly. So that makes me feel bearish or bullish. What do we think? Well, I'll get the action reaction line in a second. What do you think about this baseline? Okay, yep. I'm looking at it, and the first thing I notice is everyone closes with great separation. Every time it gets down and touches this line, even though there's some nice thrust through it, there's nothing but buyers down here. So I'm scratching my beard going, gee, yeah, there's lots of buyers down here. My gosh. If you don't know what separation is, take a look at this bar right here. It touches the line, but look where it closes all the way up here. That's separation from where it touches the line to where it closes or it's low to where it closes. Take a look at this separation. We come down, we pierce the line, so we scout out the orders, we blow out any other stop loss orders, but look, we close all the way up here. There's nothing but buyers here, right? Are the highs, well, we're gonna use, watch the highs. Yes, they are. The high, Gerald, good, good catch, watch this now. We could do a couple things. We could just grab a any major high, but let's just grab 
this this is called also a center line if I could type now we can grab an action any of these pivots in this case in Gerald Good Eyes It almost doesn't matter what we grab, does it? Because it's trading. If you went back and found the median line, it's trading in a frequency already. So price is oscillating to the upside already. Now, we can grab... this low. I have no idea this is going to work, but I'll do it anyway. Then I can measure Okay, that distance to the low. Are you with me so far? Well, I don't know anything about flags. Do action reaction lines need to be multiple pivot lines? The center line needs to. Here's the deal. This is why Andrews quit teaching them. You have to have a line that describes price, meaning it has to interact with price and it has to hit a number of important highs and lows and it has to carry forward in frequency. And I'll show you in a second. Let me just see if my guess is right. Not going to look too bad. Watch this. So it gives you that lo that action gives you this reaction. How about that? And if, actually, if I'd even cheapened it up a bit, so where it was t so it was touching the multi pivot line, it probably it actually might have done a better job. But you you get the idea. This action spawned that reaction. I'm pretty darn close. And all I did was I grabbed this length and put it up here doubled it that would give you the action reaction yeah okay so now here let me ba back to Tom's question this is why it's so difficult this is why Andrew's quit teaching it so so if Ron and friends out there trying to sell you this baloney for 12000 or 20000 or whatever the hell they're trying to sell. Never learned action reactions from Andrew. Andrew is because he only taught to a couple people, first of all, and after about 1960, he quit teaching it because he was banging his head against a concrete wall because people couldn't see him. So in those classes that you see on that stupid YouTube video, the stuff he's teaching is baloney. And he, at, that, at that point, he was basically out of gas mentally, and people were taking advantage of him, and, uh, and shame on them. And shame on him for putting that video up. Anyway, here's a way to cheat. I don't show this often, but Tom, you asked such a good question. I'm going to show you. Watch. If you drew in the center line, here's one way to cheat. You can look at those tops and say, "Well, I've, obviously, I've got great, I've got great frequency because look at a catch." The tops as well. This is a rolling chop, guys. But here's another way. You can just go once you draw the center line and say, "Hey, does this does this do anything for me?" So let me just grab the center line. Look, let's look up here. Let's go to the micro world. Look at the highs and lows here. Here's another little multi-pivot line. See it? Look at all the lows. Look at the highs. It's a switchback line now. I can pull it. Now I can take that same line and pull it down here. And look at it work down here. I can see it grabbing the highs and lows. This line has frequency all over it. Yeah. 
Yes, so you can have numerous action reaction lines around a given center line. That's exactly right, Joe. Yep. Yeah, this is a very nice example. And I, I just picked this out of the uh, air because I don't even look at 30 minutes. So. Uh, so once the center line is defined that best describes price of the mid-range, would the action line then become a lot easier to define and hence the reaction line? Well, not necessarily, Theo. This is, a, this is an excellent example. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, unfortunately, it's not a very good example because we have multiple action lines, multiple action touches that spawn what you need, which is right down here. However, a lot of times you'll get just one major pivot and if you double it, it'll give you the reaction on the other side. This one gives you actions and reactions throughout. So this is elegant. This is very nice. The key, and the reason why Andrews was beating his head against the wall, was because, A, remember, he was drawing on paper. Imagine doing this on paper. And then getting, you saw me just wiggle this around to get exactly what I wanted. Imagine drawing this and then trying to erase it without erasing your bars. If you've ever hand drawn, it's not particularly easy. But on top of that, I'm trying to teach somebody else how to do it who may not draw, draw or chart as well as you do. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But if, they, if you're teaching them a concept like this and they draw it and they get it wrong and you go, no. So then they have to erase it all. Let me draw it. Uh, just, you know, computer drawing has, you know, made it so much easier. You need to draw on cardboard or it gets thin quick, yeah. Yeah, it's a sloper that has the line of force. Yeah, that's right. Um, actually, Andrews tried to patent a piece of acetate that had lines, pre-drawn lines on it. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get it, but they didn't accept it. But Paul says, "Can you imagine if he had computers back then?" Paul, we worked for seven years to try and give him live data and computers, and he wouldn't have them in the house. So, how would I trade this real time? Well, that's what we're going to do, Keith. Hang on. Oh, I'm no, we're not, not going to trade in real time, but was Dr. Andrews associated, Mary says, with Aunt Roger Babson, and if so, how? Sure, they met at a party in the 20s, and uh, his uh, Roger Babson was doing action-reaction work, but it was very flawed. So he had a, and Mary, and that, that's going to be part of the video that we'll be adding to the DVD. So Andrews was walking through the party, and you heard him talking about actual uh, you know calculus type volume above and below a moving average of a box of commodities and that's how he did Babson charts and after listening to what he considered to be fluff by people like W.D. Gann and some other speakers he was listening to somebody that he didn't really know Roger Babson and going uh, you know that sounds amazingly like math then he tried to ignore it because he didn't really like listening to those speakers. This was before he was into trading, when he was just a, a professor at MIT. His father owned Frank Andrews and son, but he didn't want to get in the business. And on Friday nights, he would go to the free parties for food, drinks, and skirts, as they say. And uh, then he came back around second circle to get some more champagne and a little more food. And now the guy was talking about centered moving averages. And he was going, this sounds amazingly like math. And he stopped and he stood behind him and listened for a while. And then... Uh, later introduced himself and that became a lifelong friendship and uh, Dr. Anderson who ran the math department at MIT gave him a bunch of graduate students and they began working on Roger Babson's original work which is the Babson charts that led to the discovery of action reaction lines and then median lines which are kind of a shorthand that have a mathematical probability so to speak Does that uh, that make any sense, Mary? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do about thirty minutes. In fact, I'll, in fact, what Babson got out of it is his forecasting became much better. Once, because what what they did was after four years they came back to Babson and they said that it was really fascinating. Good news, bad news. The good news is we we found some really good important stuff. The bad news is Babson charts suck. Now, you would think Babson would be upset, but actually, they spent an afternoon with him and showed him what they found, and he was so excited 
that he really changed his forecasting methods like turn of a dime, you know, I mean immediately. And he became a much better forecaster and, of course, made a fortune uh, when the stock market crashed and also made some incredible predictions, which we'll also talk about in the DVD. But, well, yeah, he, he was really the predictor of the 29 crash, yeah. In fact, uh, I have some charts that'll be in the DVD. The first time, the first break, the first big pullback in the in the Dow, the first major pullback is called the Babson break. Okay, a median line is a shorthand because it's quick. Um, yet, it, it, yes, it's not only that. Tom, um, it's, he says, Tom says, a median line is a shorthand because it's quick. It seems like finding uh, a center line takes a longer time. Well, there's two things about a median line. Median lines are from pivots, so there's no, there's little, there's much less discretion. The problem that most, this one is, is not that, not that hard to see. The problem is for a lot of center lines, only about 10% of the traders that Andrews worked with could see them. They would see crap. They'd see the wrong thing. They couldn't find the right frequency. If you don't have the right center line, you're dead. So he invented median lines after listening to Gan talk about the magic 45 degree line, but then of course, pointing out to him that if you change the scale or the number of days, the 45 degree line falls apart and then, you know, it's all smoke and mirrors. That that left something in his mind, which was, you know, if I used pivots to project a line forward, then the scale wouldn't matter, nor would the number of days, which is where median lines came from, after a bunch of research. Paul says, it's almost a harmonic that I've identified, the harmonic being the angle of the slope. Absolutely. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the harmonics, or frequency, if you will, of price in this period. All right, so let me, let's see, what do we want to leave here? Let's just leave it all. Ready? So, here we are. Let me change the color of this rascal. Let's make this green. That's our baseline. Now we come up. And we certainly fill this canyon. Here, this is a canyon. Here's a mountain. If you're new here, here's a canyon. Now we're in a period of consolidation. Let me draw these. This minor baseline right here. Oh, I think about that long. I'll make it horizontal. And we'll make it green. There. And here's our area consolidation. If you will, this is price building a fulcrum to make a move. It's storing up its energy. Tom says, could I draw a median line on this chart that would approximate the center line? I don't know. Uh, let me go back. Okay, this is the 15th. Let me go back and look. Yes, I can. How about that? That's pretty close to the same frequency. And it's a quickie. So, even without Andrew's eyes, or my eyes, or Andy's eyes, <laughs> you could have gotten a pretty darn good approximation of the frequency just by grabbing the simple... And these are just the major pivots, okay? Okay. So, here we are. We find ourselves in this consolidation now. Up or down. We're trading around. We get the center line below us, and we're consolidating. Uh, let me see, Paul. That fulcrum up at 146.55. Yeah. 
right here. Hang on a sec. We're doing, uh, doing high, we're doing high math here, folks. Yes, it is. So, high to low, we're dancing here between the zero line and 382. This is the fib dance. Um, let me make that easier to see. Do, do, do. There we go. So here's our 3A2. You can see we're consolidating between the zero line of the high and the 3A2. Okay, and that's our fulcrum. Okay. Up, 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 up. I'd like to see a retest of the lower. Well, this is not actually a median line, but this is a this is a reaction line. But okay, yes. When do I know which pitchfork to use? Normal pitchfork or modified shift? Here's what I do, especially in the currencies. Here's my number. First of all, modified shifts were invented by Jeremy Schiff in 1972 to take a look at moves that had happened vertically. Specifically, he wanted to use them stocks that lost 80 to 90 percent of their value. And that, that when price then closed back above the upper median line parallel of a modified shift. That was down sloping. Then he would know. He knew that it was time to start stalking a buy on those. That's what it was invented for. However, we've found that shifts are modified shifts are particularly useful in the currencies. You see them over and over in the currencies. Be extremely useful. I don't know why. I can't tell you mathematically why. They do have the same mathematical relationship. Andrews proved that. I've reproved it with statistics myself. So what I do, especially in the currencies, is draw a median line. If it doesn't give you what we want, immediately just use a modified shift on it and take a look at it. If that doesn't, then just throw it away. So how do I find, how do I know which one to use? Draw them and then shift mod, use a shift on it. See which one you like. Sometimes I leave both of them up. Um, it, when I draw, a lot of times I can see the modified shift in my eyes. I can see the fork without drawing it, and I can see the modified shift. So I go, you know, I can see that frequency. Let me just see which one grabs it. Now, this frequency is so nice, it doesn't surprise me at all that we're not going to get a median line that's going to do it. Okay, do I always measure between trend lines of any kind vertically do I ever measure distance perpendicularly so you're talking you'll be talking about time or space for example like this Tom am I correct Both cash and futures currencies, yes, that's correct. Um, uh, I, you know, there, I'll give, I've poo-pooed this book, so to speak, so I'll, now I'll give it some credit. How's that? Um, and God darn it, I cannot remember his name. Who wrote it about, he counted the number of bars between each turn and he was using pitchforks? Come on, I know, I know some of you guys have bought this guy's book. Oh, man. No, not J.D. Heyman. No, not Patrick McCullough. Don't buy any of that crap. <laughs> J.D. Heyman, you buy all three of his books if you can find them. Um, oh, man. No, no, he's 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 alive and well now, and, well, so does J.D. Heyman, but he's, he's younger. Uh, God. My books are all packed up, or I, I tell you. Dr. D no, not Dr. DeLoga. No, his work's not, you know, look, it's it's not, it, of all these names we've just mentioned, J.D. Hammond is the, is the, is the worthy 
go out and buy. But no, not DeLoga. No, stop yourself. Um, uh, he was pushed on INO.com. Anyway, somebody wrote a book, and what they said was, it's not Joe Kane, no. um, Some They said you could measure the number of bars. In, like He would measure like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then he'd project out seven, like, to the bar. And then he wrote a whole book in where he said, see, this is exactly right. And, well, he showed, like, 13 examples. But if you actually do the statistics on it, it actually doesn't hold up. And I wrote him along a number of emails. We talked about it. Um, and it was an interesting concept, but he did, didn't do enough statistical research. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up in time-based charts, and it doesn't hold up in space-based charts. It's just not true. Paul says, I read that book. Goodwill has it now. I couldn't replicate his work. Yeah, that's right. No, it's no Gordon. Gordon DeRue's is good stuff. No, he's got a couple misconceptions, um, and I don't know that he trades it active, but he's, his course is well worth the money and it's good. I'm all good with Gordon. Never mind. Don't bother guessing. It's all right. I, I'll, I'll think of it. And, probably in the middle of my night sleeping or something. But anyway, he wrote this book, and, and uh, you know, INO.com, like, pitched it to death. Um, but but Paul's right. It, didn't, it doesn't hold up. So these horizontal markers, if you will, you're better off getting, um, if you're looking for time or space, so to speak, from these lines, you're better off getting them where you get lines of force meeting or you get energy points. They, pro they project much better than horizontal measurements. Because, see, horizontal measurements don't, if you will, don't move correctly with the frequency of a sine wave, if you think about it, unless the sine wave is perfect. And these are slanted, and often we're only seeing one side of the sine wave, um, because in point of fact, I'm going to say this, this is going to make your head spin. It's No, it's not anybody from France. That's not it. Stop asking. No, no, no. No. Stop. And by the way, if you're reading that, that book, your head must be spinning because it's got it's got so many indicators on it. It has very little to do with pitchfork analysis, by the way. Anyway. Now I'm going to make your head spin. If you can imagine this Yeah, Paul says, for not being a smart ass, but that's a technical term. But using this example, why look for other ways to measure or forecast when these lines are so well respected by price? That's right. They work. Why look for other solutions? Well, I think he was just asking, since I did a whole lesson on vertical lines like this, do I ever use horizontal lines? And the answer is I don't because the frequency works much better this way. And action-reaction does work when you stack up ranges, but it, for me, I haven't seen it work very well when you stack up horizontal lines. They don't work very well. Now let me tell you my theory why. If you imagine this center line and its outer and lower parallels spinning so that you have like a tube in another dimension, does that make sense? A spiral. Yes, Ron. Thank you. Think about that. So we're going to spin this in another dimension outside of your computer screen. And now I've got a upsloping tube going forward, right out the top of your screen, out the back of your screen and out the top of your screen. And price, yes, and price is actually sometimes in our two-dimensional world, and sometimes it's outside, which we can't see, which would be in front or behind the back of your computer screen. And we do these equations and tests on the high-end computers at the University of Chicago, where we take a median line and we spin it in space, and then take another one and spin it in space, and we look at the interactions in multiple-dimensional multiple space, okay? And I think that's probably why horizontal lines don't work as well because they don't actually fit in that it would in this sense it would be three dimensions but it's, it would be the fourth and fifth and sixth dimension so to speak so hopefully your head's not spinning too much gans tunnel through the air no no please come on 
Gantz tunnel through the air is Gantz tunnel into his bank account. Okay, Tom. Oh, uh, well, okay, if you had said it that way, I might have actually gone somewhere else, but anyway. Uh, 90 degrees from the trend line. Sure. That's a, that's a completely different question. So if you meant per perpendicular to the trend line like this, yes. Because that carries the frequency. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Scotty McClendon says, because we're on flat screens, we cannot see the depth of the spinning dimension. That's correct, because we're in 2Ds, 2D. Um, you know, there's a famous book called Flatland, and then a new book recently out called, Fl I believe it's Flatter Land or Flat World. Um, which is the modern version of it, um, which is about living in a one-dimensional world um, and then having two-dimensional people des describe it. Uh, and now it's about people living in a three-dimensional world, which we live in, and having the fourth-dimensional people find it. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff. Anyway. I, ho I hope I'm not making your head. Yes, that's Christian. Chris Friedman is the original author, yes. Now there's a new one out. Would fractals apply here? Yes, they would, Chef. They are, yeah, so you'll see the minis. That's why I was saying go in there, just roll up your sleeves and see, as I did right here, make sure the fractals are actually what you're looking for. Does it carry, does, it, does, it, does that frequency carry down in here? And that's how we cheat and find out whether that's, that center line is going to work is we take a line parallel and just draw in the fractals and say, yeah, it's, Hey, it's carrying frequency pretty darn good. Okay, now I feel good about the center line. <laughs> that's heavy, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Tom says, do I consider 382 fib as frequent support or resistance after major highs or lows? Uh, I can. I consider it the testing point, yeah. Because there's going to be a lot of orders there. So what it does after major highs and lows, A, I might trade off of it because I want to stab the FIB guys in the back or trade in front of them steal their money. Or B, if they, if they get blown away, then, of course, I want to use their stops in my favor. Oh, yeah, Wolfram Computing, absolutely. Go to go to go to uh, mathworld.wolfram.com. Absolutely, Wolf. He, yeah, absolutely magnificent. And by the way, related to the University of Chicago. Doctor Wolfram has uh, got some amazing stuff. So let's do let's do some more of this. All right. So now we think. Uh, okay. So what do we think up or down again? I found I got lost. Where where are we at here now? I'm rambling. Up. Andy just oh Andy just had a uh, okay a hot flash good. I just made a light go on cool. We're getting lots of ups. Anybody down? Paul says for me the fib dance so propensity is for the downside okay. Uh, somebody take a picture of the screen or several of you and just send this to me so I remember to look at this as a fib dance. Add this to our corner trade or Fibansa package. Up, up. No idea. Rangey, wait for a break. Okay, that makes sense. I've got a couple downs, a lot of ups. Buy another bar. That makes sense to me. Let's buy another bar. There's our. We got an inside bar. That didn't help us. Tested the range. Closed with good separation, still hasn't helped us. Would you buy? Where would you buy? Uh oh, got a couple downs. Okay, okay, if you want to get long, where do you want to get long? At the center line? Let's take a look. Let's say we got long right here. 146.03. 
you can put a stop at that looks like 95 yeah this is this is a swing low right here so we want our stop five to seven pips below here so let's go to 89 you buy an 03 with an 89 you can afford that a 15 pip stop if you want to get long A 3A2, somebody want to, okay, yep, that's, uh, there you go. And that would give you the 3A2 as, okay, so here, let's draw that in. Just want to get long right in here. With a stop under these lows. Go to 89, I think. So there's our stop, 50, about 15 pips ish. And we have two things going for us. We've got the swing low right here, which there should be buyers here. And we also have, if they're going to be buyers at the 3A2 pullback of this, there should be FIB buyers. We're hiding behind them as well, yeah? We're buying above the orders that are at the 3A2, and our stop is below. So we're using them both ways. That makes sense? Uh, is it, well, Chef says, is this a swing low because it didn't take out the swing high? Um, it's, it's a, it, it's a, this is one of those, remember, remember what I said last week, I can show you how to draw perfect charts or I can show you how to make, draw charts that can make money. I can show you how, I can give you exact rules, which is what, what, unfortunately, what everybody in the world wants. Or I can give you methods that'll make money. Okay, that's why Andrews had his counts. Andrews and Dr. Anderson. That's why they use what they call loose counts or sloppy counts. That's why when we identify swing highs and swing lows, they're going to be a little bit loose. Does this classically take out the prior high? No, but it's clear that with this huge run up, this is the pullback. So this is the swing low, even though it didn't take out this high. So there'll be orders here. People wanted to, okay, blew up higher here, came down, people didn't get low. Now when it takes out this high, they try and get long here. Now it makes this high. When it goes in this consolidation, if there are any buyers, they're either at 382 or they're at that swing low. Okay? It's the artsy part, that's right. The stops at 50% of the FIB number for Ron says, that's okay with me. If it breaks through here, I don't want to be long. All right, let's take another bar. Ready? Here we go. And we're long. Da, 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 da. Now we're assuming, of course, that we're not trading with FXCM and Gain Capital and Friends. It went through like a by a pip or two. But let's assume we're trading with the Bank of England. And we got filled. Everybody with me? We've got our stop in at 89 now, below the FIB. Great separation on this, yes. I mean, if you got long here, at least for this one bar, you should be ecstatic. Oh, somebody, okay. Hang on one second. Hang on. Hang on, Theo. Elaborate on my FXCM point, Andrew says. Uh, I, I'm, look, I'm just using them as targets. I don't, I, don't, I'm, I don't even trade with them, so. But, oh, I'm talking about the spread. Bid-ass spread. Gain Capital, FXCM, uh, give me some more, guys. Uh, FX Solutions, IBFX. You have to pay a spread to trade. So if it's, you know, 
if, if it's at 89, it's got to trade well through 89 for you to get filled if you're the buyer. MB trading, whatever. Whoever they actually, you know. People should do Google reviews of the FX broker they use. Do some research. Absolutely. Do I worry about lower lows and lower highs in the last three to four bars? No, because we're within this trading range. I'm not worried about it. And I don't even care. To be honest with you, Tom, I, um, I, I, I don't, I'm not really going to care about it because I'm just trying to give you an example. I don't know if this is a winner or a loser. Um, we're just trying to show an example whether or not this is a quality, the best setup in the world of how to use this area, the 382, as well as this swing low as protection if you're going to get long against the center line. There may be better as a, better structure examples up here, but since some people decided that it's going up, this is the place where you want to get long. And this is where your stop wants to be. Now let's play it out. If it turns out to be a loser, it, it's a loser. That's okay. That's the idea. I have no idea where this chart's going. I don't really care. It's more it's more the exercise. Okay, so now here's our next bar. Higher bar and great separation. Wonderful. That's what we want to see. Where's our where, what's our profit idea? We haven't talked about that yet, have we? Yep, thank you, Tom. I, you know what you said that just as yep. <laughs> we shouldn't even be putting orders in, should we? 140, 1460, all right. So that, let me, excuse me, I'm going to, I'm going to, Mike, oh, I can't do that. I was going to uh, mute myself and cough, but I can't do that. Yes, I can. Wait. All right, now we're, there we go. Feels much better. All right. Don't, yeah, don't move to break even too fast. Yeah, Sean just said that over my shoulder. Dad, slow down. Don't move to break, break even. 146.52. Uh, not a bad idea. It, here's my opinion. The top line of the canyon top. That's right, Bob. Get a mic on, Sean. Actually, Mary, Sean's going to do his two oil trades for the DVD. And Vela the Snail 2 will be available, I've been told. 146.35. Um, yes, that's what I was thinking. What I was going to point out is if this is your area to get out, so I don't. I think you probably have to consider this high as well. Um, top of the consolidation is an awful. So now let's think about it. Now are you willing to take this trade if we had been actually uh, smart enough to do this? It is 2 to 1. 146.45-ish. Yeah, I, I think it's all right, Chef. Chef, right in there. How about 618 is... You're getting a little elaborate for me, but I'll do it anyway. Of the last swing high. I don't think I'm capable of doing that. You could do this, though. And I don't have this rascal set up today. And then make this one. Sorry, this one. Point six one eight. Nope, I guess not. Point six one eight. And this is a Fibonacci. There we go. That does nothing for me. So never mind. Gives me my interesting buy target, but anyway. Apparently I'm asleep. Let me just erase this rascal. <laughs> Did my daughter hold out for a million for Vela the Snail? No, actually what they're both going to do is I'm going to pay them both um, a, a certain amount for the, each DVD that's sold, and they get to pick the charity that their money goes to. How's that?
Yeah, they're going to be, it'll be royalties, but they're both going to go to charity. Yep. And they, I don't know what they're going to pick. I think at the moment, they're, Lucy is going to do Children's Hospital, I think. But anyway. All right, so here we are. We bought the second bar. We're talking about a profit target. I think I'm going to go Chef. I'm going to go right up here at... I'm going to make it 43, Chef. And here's what I... And now, if I was just playing... Let me ask you this question now. If we're long just above uh, 146, and our stop is 15 pips, 2 to 1 means we have to get at least to 30, yeah? So if you're if you're only playing for 35, we're getting kind of slim. Draw a line joining the last two highs and use that as the exit around 146.43. Last two highs. Oh, okay. You mean a down sloping line, Paul? Down sloping trend line. There you go. Very elegant. I like that. How about that? Okay. So now we have some, some method to our madness. How's that? We have just eyes. Now we have actually some method. Yes, this recording will not only be available on the website, but you'll also get an email saying that a Windows Media version is available and you'll be able to click on it. it come, it'll come right to your email. But it'll be on the website in about two hours. On, on the free portion, right on the front page. Okay. Ah, Vinny from New Jersey says, in my earlier discussion about sideways movements if of price, doesn't the diamond formations provide the tell when price should break out? Yes, it does, Vinny. That's why I invented diamonds. But we haven't gotten that far. But yes, when we get there, then we'll actually have some horizontal, something interesting. All right, you take care. So if you guys got to walk out, you got to walk out. I understand we're going a little long already. I'm a little, I'm either a little verby today or this is just an interesting example, but um, this is more about learning than it is about trading tips anyway. So, all right, let's buy, let's guard and see our next bar. We'll play this one out and then we'll just do a quick thing. All right, so we're, we're headed higher. So far, so good. Those of you that wanted to get out at 35, the high was 29. Sorry, not yet. We've got uh, 29 pips in this. Anybody want to do anything yet? Don't know anything about flags. Everybody says, Tim, don't move your stop too fast. Okay. All right. I'm good. I'm checking. I'm just checking. All right. Because at this point, you know, Drew's taking his 10 pips. My, par my, my partner downtown. Trailing stop from 146.30. Oh, yeah. Well, we haven't gotten that far yet, though. Where would you put it, Reese? Oh, okay. Russ Russ wants to go on record as saying that he's going to break even. Okay. Duly noted, Russ. I mean, I don't think there's... The reason why I'm not going to go to break even is I don't think there's even enough profit in here for me to bother to go to break even. I need the whole thing. Oh, five pips. So he's just... Reese is just going to trail a stop below the move up as it makes new highs, five pips below. Okay. Matt likes uh, break even. Okay, I'm all, I'm fine with that. I'm good with cheap. I I have no problem with going to break even. If you want to do bread and butter here and go break even, some people even take you know half their profits off here at thirty five and let the rest run. I have no problem with that. Absolutely. For the, especially if you have a smaller account, guys. Here's my opinion. If you have a small account. And you just learn how to trade this stuff. Get the break even. Mary says currencies are too volatile for a five pip trailing stop. In her opinion, I would agree with you, Mary. Unless you went vertical 
And then at some point you just go, hey, I don't know where to put a stop. Let me just put a trailing. I wouldn't do five pips, but let me just put a trailing stop on it. And if it keeps making new highs, it keeps making new highs. But, yes, I agree with you. The spread's more than five for most of you. Yeah. If you're trading cash FX, the spread is that wide. Reese, Reese concedes, Mary. He's a gentleman and a scholar, and he concedes your point. All right, so let's look at the next bar. Double tops, slightly lower closed. I'm not scared. This is a 30-minute, and we're doing this because people are on MetaTrader as well, and they're, I've not been able to use 20-minute or, or 240s not available on MetaTrader. So we're purposely using a 30-minute, and we're purposely looking bar by bar. So I know that there's stuff to the right, but we're looking at it bar by bar, and we want to know how price reacts around this 3A2 and this energy point. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining this to somebody that joined late. 240s are available. Okay, man. My apologies. Now that it's left to double top, me, I'm going to break even. So now I'm cheap. There you go, guys. How about everybody else? If you think, you're, if you think I'm going too fast, just tell me. The, the close was at... 20. Everybody okay with break even or people think I'm moving too fast? What does Sean think? He went back upstairs. Okay, so here we go. Uh oh. Lower close, good separation on the close. Oh, look at that bar. Saved for the moment and a new high. Those of you that wanted to get out of 35, let me just go on the record. The high was 36. Some of you are out at 35. Glove save, yes, snow cone catch. Michael Jackson, yes, is on record as saying that he wanted out at 35, and he's out. Yes, I've got you. Okay. Theo says he wants partial profits as well there. Okay, so as I said before, if you have a smaller account, go to break even quick, which you should have when we made this move up, and you should be taking partial profits up here at the top end of the range. Absolutely. Take some money. You'll feel better. Now you can't lose money on this. Let me go back a bar. Somebody wants to know. What I said was, look at the separation from its high. So it's, it made a new low. I'm just looking. It's closing in the lower third of the bar. I'm noting that. I'm paying attention to ev the open, high, low, and close of every bar. Especially if you've seen the step-by-step -step lessons. I'm looking at each one of the closes and, and the way it opened and saying, okay, well, the sellers are still in control, the buyers are now in control. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking about that before the next buyer. Remember, I have no, this is not a period that I would look at, so I have no idea where this is going. Honest to God. Mary says she loves this bar by bar stuff. Well, it's good. So good separation to the upside. Well, this was good separation to the downside in this bar, Tom, because of where it opened and where it closed. This, next bar, this is good separation to the upside. Look at it. Where it opened, where it closed. Great separation to the upside. Yes, well, Mary, actually, I hope you're going to grab some of these bar by bars, and we'll edit them. If you're saving these in AVIs, Mary, then we'll edit them, and we'll just grab some of the bar by bars that we like, and Adam is one of the as parts of the knowledge expansion packs. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, just gra grab them all and, and we'll upload them. I'll tell you where to upload them. And we'll just keep them as an archive and go through them. Yep. Okay. Next bar. Ready? So some people are out on partials. Also broke above a lower diagonal, which is not drawn. All right, 
We want to know for wealthy Tom says I can't, can't the money's burning him, he's gotta know. Uh forty three was our profit target. The high oh it's forty one. Come on. And look at the close back in its back within the range. New high, so to speak. Still making new highs, but so far it's busting us. Come on. Missed it by missed it by two ticks. Let me move this over. And don't you hate when that happens? Ray, stop, Ron says, and not, Mark says, now he's going to break even. Well, I'm already at break even. I'd be underneath here, but it's the same basically as being break even. This is a swing low to me now because we took out these double tops. So I'd be underneath here, but it's the same thing, being at break even. This low is 06. I'd be five pips below it, so we're at break even. Yep. And hopefully... Not good separation. No, I'm not wild about this last bar, but that's life. Um, hopefully, now you have taken some partial profits at 35 if you're multiple lot trader. And we've reached this reaction line. Yeah, okay. I don't know that this is that... See, I, I think, by the way, this line really kind of gives you the same profit target. And I, I guess maybe we might have considered that as well when we drew this in, but we didn't. So let's, you know, let's not be looking back. Can we call the Bank of England and tell them to push it up three-fifths? Yes, immediately. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. And aren't you glad you took some partial profits? Now look at the great separation on this close. But we're, now, remember, take a step back from your screen, so to speak. It's just trading in a range. It's trading to the upside of the range. It's trading to the downside of the range. It's trading to the upside of the range to the downside of the range. Back and forth and back and forth. That's what a range is until it breaks out. So just relax and let it do that. If it stops you out now, you've taken some money at 35. It stops you out for the break even. It's not the end of the world. It's a lotto now. Energy call, absolutely. We hope this energy call is going to resolve itself to the upside. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. And we're stopped out of break even. Now we're at the 3A2. Let's find out if we were, we'll breeze through this last part. Let's find out if we were smart enough to get out at break even or if the FIB guys really end up controlling this move. Next bar. Well, we would have got stopped out down here, too. So the break-even looked pretty good, doesn't it? We took some money at 35. Stopped out the balance at break-even if you didn't take everything. Didn't have to eat the 15-pip loss. The FIB guys, where's the close here? Uh, I can't even see it. Closes at 98. So closes actually right on the fib, just so you know. So this could be a wash and rinse. We'll see. So, yeah. We've got a do-over. It didn't cost us anything. We might have we might have done partial profits. Let's see what the fib guys do. Look at this close. Wash and rinse. You want to know what a wash and rinse looks like? This is it. Ooh, Paul. Cop copy me on that, will you? So this is what a wash and rinse looks like. Now let's see if this ends up being... We would have been stopped out anyway, but let's, let's see if this wash and rinse... Ends up being golden. Look at this close now. It makes a slightly new high, and the close is all the way down below the fib. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's slightly above the fib, but we broke below the fib, and it's it's right at actually about where we would have gotten in right in here. So lower third.
A, B equals C, D, yeah, okay. Up, and the fib guys are busted. Feeling better now? Fib busters? And now they're just wanking everybody now. Now it's just slap world. And now, but note this. Now, somebody, and I think this was Tom that asked earlier about lower highs and how about getting long. And I was saying within the range, it doesn't bother me. That's where we were right here. But now take a look. We've got this lower high, this lower high, this lower low, this lower low, this lower low. Slightly different picture. Okay, email me. And the reason why I'm so much email me, Paul, is I'll forget to do it. But yes, okay, got it. Let me just finish out the uh, sequence here. Look at that bar. Yahoo! See, in this market, you just don't want to play. Down fork? Sure. Down for it didn't work for me. This isn't what I was looking for. I could do that. And then a sliding parallel. And you can see we don't have any closes above that sliding parallel. Okay. There's your retest of the downsloper. Let's see where the close is. The 46.13 closes all the way up in here. Closes with great separation up here. Blows through and closes above it. But you can see this has become so sloppy at some point. When we were back here and long and taking our money, it's in a range. We've taken some money at 35. We missed our ultimate profit target by two ticks. Uh, maybe we should have been smarter about this sliding parallel, but in no matter, we, if nothing else, we got the lotto. The lotto ticket working for us. And then got busted out. But when it starts to do this, we don't want to play anymore. Now it's just a mess. Especially when you see that bar. You got to say, thank you. I can play something else. Go look at a different currency. This center line worked great, yeah. Absolutely. No. <laughs> uh, it just gets out of control now. But there was no easy entry. So it's 8 o'clock almost. Hopefully you like this one. Yeah, I'm doing better. Reese, I'm, I'm doing my best to get better. Let's really quickly take a look at uh, I just want to know Couple quick charts. I haven't looked this morning. Uh, uh, uh. Gold. G20, huh? Hundy. The boys is working. Oh, yes, I'll get to ES in a minute. Paul says, the lesson for me in this is that there isn't always a trade on every chart. That's right. There's times when you should just step out of the way and say, okay, it's become too volatile. Never mind. Then move to a different currency pair or commodity. This is G20, uh, Andy doing its work, trying to push it down. Yeah, I'll get the oil. Hang on. 
Oil next. Um, I wanted uh, crude daily. Where the heck is it? I know it's here. Yeah, there it is. Alrighty. So far, so good. Now, we've taken out this low. I'd really like... We're hunt Remember, we're short a half a position up here. I'd like it to close and take out these lows. Then I, re I really, my wife was asking me, where do I actually think it is? And she, she said to me, if you talk to your buddies in China, are they going to be buying at 60? And I said, I actually think if we get down to 60 bucks, they're going to step out of the way this time and see if there are any other buyers. Because I think that they realized that they were holding the market up. If you think about some of the other markets, they've, they've been getting a little smarter about their trading style. So I think it'll be interesting to see what happens when we get to 60. When we get down to this, if we get down to this line right here, I'm not going to be quick to take my profits because I think if it breaks this line, you might be looking at $40 oil, $45 real quick. That's if. Now, don't, if you're not short, if you're not in this position, this is not where you want to get short. You want to get short up here. Where there was a stop. There's nothing. There's nowhere to get short in here. Don't play in here, please, folks. Don't just blindly go short, just because J.P. Morgan and friends are underwater. All right. All right. Let's look at E-mini S and P's. Oh, I got to look at Hoggies. Sorry. I don't want a weekly. Yeah. Whole lot of nothing. That's fine. Still short of 54. We're at break even. We've got about four cents in it. Profit target's about four or five cents lower. Not much to talk about yet. All right, so let's look at E mini SPs. Somebody says, Is it over yet? And remember, you saw it here first, at least if you were in the premium section. Uh, dailies, 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 dailies. NASDAQ daily. There's the big, 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 big NASDAQ. Nice turn down. NASDAQ weekly. Nice turn down. And remember, where was that? Maybe I didn't save that nice NASDAQ. I'll look at it next time. Oh, this is a Dow, that's why. Because I'm a nitwit. NASDAQ weekly. There it is. We never even made it to the 382, by the way, folks. And finally, the E mini S and P daily. If I can find out where the darn thing is, not Apple. Yes, daily. Thank you. Ova, you saw it here first. Paul says you just said we have four cents in it, and profit target is another four cents away. Risk reward is one to one. Yes, when you hunt, sometimes your risk reward does get cuckoo. No doubt about it. Absolutely, Paul. But I have no structure to hide behind. Mark, yes, absolutely. This will. What? When will I know that I'm correct? See this line that I marked down here. When we close below this line, then I can put this chart on the front of the median line page, medianline.com, and say, "Okay, this is what we did in premium." And it's over. That line references two swing lows to the left. This swing low and this swing low. And the median, upsloping median line. You take all of that out, and then I think we probably have seen the high for the whole shebang. Because we came up to the second major mountain to the left over here, this spike high. Now I think we'll start to head back in and fill these mountains down below. <laughs> Paul says, when the E-mini S&P hits 500, I can say that I was here the morning that I called the top. Yeah, that and five cents will get you five cents, right? When do you get in? Uh, well, here, Stephen, I, even though I wrote, oh, I don't know if you're here when we did this, when I wrote OVA on the chart, it was actually right over here, this peak above. And I said, you know what? This is enough is enough. So 
I, I had been quiet the whole time. I said, you know, this it's over. I, it may go up a little bit, but I need some stru- But you need now we need some structure before we can get in. It's not time. What was the high? <laughs> Russ is short at uh, 1072 and three quarters. Well, you're you're in good uh, good shape, my friend. Oh, Paul says. I actually called him before he hit the line. Okay, Paul will go back and check for me. Okay. 10.14 was the switchback and the 38.2% retrace. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd really like it to take out these two swings. Give us some structure. Take out these two swings. Then we'll find, then we'll hunt a short. It, and you've heard me say this before. It may be at a lower price, but at least I'll know a whole lot more about the market. That's a lot better than trying to sell here and get shagged out, trying to sell here and get shagged out, getting all excited about this sell-off and selling down here, then getting shagged out. Do that four or five times and you've eaten into a lot of equity. Instead, let this thing run its course, start to take out some lows, then get excited. And, you know, if you learn nothing else from these moves, one is that they always go further than you thought. Mark says he's watching for a switchback at the blue median line. Yep. Okay. Okay, it's 8 o'clock, guys. i got to go upstairs and give my kids a hug and a kiss before they go to school because they're about to leave. I love you all. I hope you all have a uh, fine week if you're not here for the premium sessions. Otherwise, I'll see you next Monday. If you are here, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna today I'll post a chart for you guys uh, to, to do your homework, and then tomorrow... That's correct, Steve. I will not technically call it over until we see some structure. That's right. But I think intuitively it's over. Tomorrow uh, we'll work on a chart that I have put up without a name or price line, and then we'll go at it bar by bar. So have, it'll be posted right on the front page of marketgeometry.com. But right under this video get posted then this afternoon on top of that you'll see the uh, you'll see the chart everybody will see the chart okay Ron says he thinks I'm right that it's over oh, I hope I hope so I, I mean just because I like being right anyway have a great day there guys if you're not here the rest of the week have a great week trading I'll see you a week from now those of you that are in premium I'll see you all week long Take care. I'm Tim Morge, MarketGeometry.com. I'm going to go up and give my wife and kids a hug. You guys should all do the same. Take care.